Hello, my name is Joseph Hansen. I'll be narrating this strip till video for you. This is a video taken uh, in Johnson County in southeastern Iowa, right around Iowa City there. Uh, I believe it was about November 10th that this video was taken. So he's got a 8430 with the Friesen toolbar, which came off of a 1780 planter. The Friesen toolbars are becoming increasingly common for these uh, 30 and 40 foot pull type units. You see he also has the Montag uh, steerable dry fertilizer cart. I believe that's an eight ton unit that he has there. And it is the high output unit. And anyone interested in running the Montag dry fertilizer unit with the, the Dawn strip till product, I would recommend going with the high output unit as you'll see here. The reason for going with that high output unit is that the upward speed of our unit uh, can get quite high and you want a unit that can push the product out and use the maximum performance level of our unit. You'll see here that these are standard row units. These are not high speed row units on this toolbar and for that reason he's going to be seeing an operating speed typically in the 6 to 8 mile an hour range. There are other things that the high speed unit does for you but for most people in most conditions the standard unit is suitable. There is one high speed unit located on the toolbar all the way on the row on the far left and you'll see a little bit of a comparison between the operation of the high speed unit and the standard unit. You'll see that the, the high speed unit does confine the soil between the two tires pretty well. <clears throat> However, at the uh, more nor uh, lower operating speeds, around 7 miles an hour, there won't be a huge performance difference. Uh, the high-speed unit might make a little bit uh, different berm, but you won't see a huge performance difference there. However, to run an ammonia kit, you do have to have the high-speed unit. This is a, a field, I believe, which was not no-tilled last year or... Uh, for whatever reason, the soil was a little bit hard. It was also extremely cold on this day. And um, it, when it's extremely cold and, uh, and the soil is compacted, sometimes the strip will come up a little bit chunkier. But here I think you can see that it's, uh, it's doing a fairly good job. I believe this customer is running a John Deere RTK system with the new monitor <coughs> and uh, on that tractor in it seems to be steering itself pretty well. Looks like he's running about five inches deep here. It is good if, if you can to get into those larger size, you know, six to eight ton hoppers instead of the smaller ones because when you get 12 or 16 rows moving at seven to 10 miles an hour, it can get to be a lot of filling. Here's a field just down the road from where we were. I believe this uh, this was a cornfield which was planted for human consumption, actually, uh, and some uh, uh, special varieties. It's a really manageable level of residue, uh, harvested in a way that is not going to cause you any trouble. Just a really not much of a challenge here at all. You can see it's making a nice black strip there. That brings up an interesting point I've been uh, discussing with some people lately. When you're in corn on corn, the effect of the row cleaners is sometimes not fully understood. I think a lot of customers, when they want to get a blacker strip, their natural intuition is to run the row cleaners deeper. This is, in general, not the right way to go. You, uh, In many times, if you have really loose in the, in the fall when you have really dry uh, fluffy uh, you know stiff pieces of residue you're oftentimes going to be better off raising the trash wheels up rather than bringing them down low letting the coulters work because the coulters work in the soil is really what gives you that black strip and uh, you need to the trash wheels if they're too deep can actually hold the unit out of the ground and here you see the kind of black strip we'll be making in those corn stalks which should be a pretty good place to plant Thank you.